Hello, my name is Frances Perkins. I work with Fluid Imaging Technologies and I'm here to talk to you today about the FlowCam Cyano. We are going to run a sample so you can see how the FlowCam Cyano works relative to the other FlowCam models that we have available. We're going to start by having a tour of the FlowCam Cyano. The pipette is inserted into the top and sample is drawn through a flow cell by the syringe pump, which is computer controlled. The objective, this is a 10x objective in this case, which is the primary objective used by most samples, is on an autofocus stage, so manual focusing is not required in this case. And finally, once the sample has passed through the system, it goes into the waste container. However, there's also a rinse and clean container, which facilitates automated rinse and clean functions between samples. That helps with the longevity of the flow cell to ensure that they can be used for many years. We are going to run a sample now. And we'll start by pipetting it into the top. Saving the file and then collecting the data. Data acquisition is a relatively easy process on the FlowCam because it's facilitated primarily by the equipment in this case. What's happening is as we draw the sample through the system, there's a red laser beaming across the flow cell and as pigmented organisms pass through the system, it triggers the camera to take a picture. So we have in this case, lots of green algae, so Cosmarium and Starastrum, for example, that contain chlorophyll A. So that triggers into the diatoms and algae category. We also have lots of cyanobacteria. In this case, it's primarily anabina, and that triggers into the cyanobacteria category thanks to its dominance with phycocyanin. So as the data passes through the system, we can quickly screen which organisms are dominant in the system and begin to assess which organisms are going to create a specific problem at any given point, whether for monitoring or research purposes. It will take about six minutes to gather data from a one mil sample volume. And once that time is complete, then you can begin to analyze the individual images for the identification and cell counting process. One mil is not the required sample volume to run. Some people will run only half a mil. For example, bloom season in Texas in August when it's very warm, half a mil may be sufficient for data volume. Others who are in northern climates who are much colder may run as much as 100 milliliters of sample volume. So either way, that can vary depending on the ecosystem that you're in. Once data acquisition is complete, you can take a look at this particular scatter plot to begin to assess what types of organisms that you have in your sample. In this case, you can see that this streak in the middle that's highlighted in red is cyanobacteria. This lower right-hand cluster contains diatoms and other algae. So we have an instantaneous impression of the composition of the sample. In this case, this was a two mil sample volume and we have approximately 690 data points and the sampling time was 13 minutes. So as we highlight this group of diatoms and algae, we can begin to get a sense of the organisms that are actually in here and identify up to the genus level in most cases who's in the sample. What we need to do is begin to order the data by the type of organism that it is instead of just the rough raw data set that you're seeing here. And we can do so using image recognition technology. So if I click on two organisms, in this case I selected two Asterionella, a common diatom, and I'm going to find out if there are any remaining in this sample that bear resemblance to those two that I selected. What happened is we took those two and we used something called binary image overlay. So we have a pixelated representation of the images and it's very difficult to see on the screen right now, but what we're effectively doing is saying, okay, based on the length of this spine or based on the width of this organism, we are calculating the particle properties and we're counting the pixels for each organism. So those particle properties in this window right here are changing as I hover over each image. So at the beginning of the data set are the organisms that are most related to these two that I selected, where the end of the data set contains the organisms that are least related to those two that I selected. And it's that principle that allows us to rapidly identify all of the organisms in any given sample. What we're going to do 
is open a reporting tool now, which demonstrates how this is possible. And this particular tool is used by a variety of different agencies, depending on the type of application. So this is a blank template at the moment, and it creates a representation of the organisms in the sample. And I'm going to apply this template to my raw data set to find out what's in here. So we can see that this first category contains Stephanodiscus, second is Fragilaria, Asterionella, Anabina, Cryptomonas, and then the last three categories are the interesting ones because there are more than just five types of organisms in this sample. So what we've done is we've automatically pulled out the most dominant organisms in the sample, but then highlighted in the cyanobacteria section or in the diatoms and algae section, any remaining that might not have been caught by the initial filters in any given library. And what we can do is say, oh wow, here's, here's a green algae that we haven't yet identified. Let's add a new class. In this case, I'm gonna call it a little round green thing. And we can add a new class based on that type of organism and transition the organism into that particular category. So that way moving forward, I could take this image, save it and email it to somebody who might know what they're doing in this particular case. So we have an automated image recognition system, but it still functions as a microscope where the user is responsible ultimately for identifying the organisms in the sample. Finally, data can be exported into Excel in this case, we have our class, the first class that was in the sample, Stephanodiscus, the count 38, the concentration 19 per mil, and then biovolume statistics along with other common size measurements. And as we scroll down, we can see the same thing for each class. Another possibility is to export data on a per organism basis for every single individual image. So you can see here that we have our biovolume for every individual stephanodiscus here in the volume category. And as we scroll down, we ultimately see all of the other organisms in the sample as well. As you can see, the Flocam cyano automatically distinguishes cyanobacteria from other algae and diatoms and is used all over the world for both monitoring and research applications in the aquatic sector. If you have any questions, please let us know and thank you very much for watching.